What's going on everybody and welcome to the RC Retro channel. Yeah, I'm shooting from a different location, not too far from where I used to be, right downstairs below us, uh, but my basement, for those of you who follow the channel, uh, one of my recent videos know that uh, somebody drove their car into the side of my house, damaging the concrete foundation and severing the gas line. So my house is deemed unlivable at the moment, but it is a Sunday and um, my wife is out with the kids doing some stuff. So I figured, let me get into the house. I turned on some of the electric space heaters just to take out the chill from the house and give me a couple hours just to hang out right here at the dining room table and build the Tamiya F104 Pro version two. Now I'm expanding my horizons as far as getting into race classes for this upcoming spring. So we have a group C slash F1 race class. And well, I didn't want to miss all the fun. And so I went out and bought this. All right, very, very cool. It is kit number 58652, came out in 2018 and is considered to be the evolution of the F104 Pro, which came out in 2009. And this has many upgraded parts added to it since then. You have an FRP double deck chassis, you have a ball differential, you have A, and I say A because there is one, oil filled shock in there with that cool anodized blue. Uh, you have synthetic rubber tires. Now I'm not really sure why it's called synthetic rubber. I know rubber is synthetic, but is it a different type of rubber? I don't know. I'm only gonna be using the Tamiya ones as show as I have other ones that I'll be using for asphalt, but we'll get to that later on in the video, but pretty cool. And then there are a few other bits on here, like the blue anodized turnbuckles, the casing of the ball diff, and a few other little bits and pieces that I'll talk about throughout the build. And of course, this actually comes with ball bearings. Now, when I was reading online, as far as hop-up parts, two, were particularly spoken of over and over again that people highly recommended for the F104 Pro version two. One of them right over here is the F104 carbon rear shaft. This cuts down on the weight of the car. Um, there's less rotational mass, so making it that much lighter. So. Then we have part 54166, the F104 aluminum motor mount. It's the right and the left side. Many people were saying that you should get this, and so I got it. I mean, how could I resist that nice, beautiful, blue anodized TRF color right over there? As far as what I'm running in here, a Phantom Helix 25.5 brushless motor. That's what we're running for this race class. Let's see what else do I have over here a Hobbywing 10BL60 censored ESC, very reasonably priced, Spectrum receiver, most likely a Savox servo, and then as far as the body, this kit does come with the body, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it or not. So I did get a BD Design F1 body right over here, just in case, I'm not 100% sure. We'll know more later on in the video. And that's really it. So I'm gonna get to building. Uh, this shouldn't take me that long um, from what everyone said. It's a very, very simple build. So let's get this open and get building. So upon opening it up, this kit, as far as the box, is about the same size as other Tamiya kits you would get. and looks pretty full. But once you take the body out, which has some stuff in it, there's really not much else. So when my friends all joked around me saying I'd have this built in about an hour, they're probably right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the chassis and make a chassis protector, or at least a template. Now, I know this is an F1 and they sit super low to the ground and I'm running this on pavement or asphalt, but I am gonna try to preserve the bottom of the chassis as long as I can. So I'm going to trace this. Okay. 
All right, so step number one, we're attaching the T-bar plate to the chassis and then eventually mounting the motor mount. Now, I am not using the plastic one that's in the kit. Again, I'm going with part number 54166, the F104 aluminum motor mount. Bling, bling. So, it doesn't seem too hard. Let's put this together and see what we have. So that's the chassis and the motor mount. Love that blue anodized TRF blue, bling bling. I uh, forgot to mention this, but this is a nice little touch with this kit. You have all hex hardware, so that's nice. All right, on to steps three to five. We're gonna be putting together the rear shaft, the ball diff, and smacking it all together. And that's pretty much the biggest part of this build right here. <laughs> Not really much to this. Kilograms, grams. Okay. Let's see, 24 grams. Six grams. Okay. Not bad. So you're definitely saving some weight in the rear by switching over from the metal. I'm assuming this is like aluminum or I don't even know what kind of metal. I'm not a metal expert. <laughs> but carbon, way lighter. All right, and that's that. Steps three through five. Super smooth. Now, they give you a choice of two different spur gears, 104 and 93, I believe. They give you a 25-tooth pinion, and obviously both would give you different final drive ratios. I went with the higher or I guess the bigger number so it's a little be a little bit slower uh, just because these things are so light and there's gonna be so much power run through this I think I'm gonna start off with the bigger spur and the 25 and if anything I'll play around with the pinion gear uh, to adjust the ratio before I even consider dropping down to a smaller spur gear I just want to see how this handles out there on the asphalt because I, don't know, I have a feeling that these things are going to be all over the place so all right but so far so good let's continue on all right so we are up to step number six we're going to attach the motor again we are using a 25.5 phantom helix brushless motor not a 17.5 i know it says it on the box but inside is a 25.5 and then we're going to get the front lower arms on we're going to center the servo and put the servo saver on. We're gonna take this all the way up to step number 12. So we're gonna do a lot off camera. Put the tie rods on and the servo saver and get it right up to where we are mounting the servo to the front of the chassis. So, All right, step six through 12 are done. You're mounting your servo in the front. They give you two options of using a regular size servo and a low profile servo. Either which way, you have to cut the mounting tabs off, which I'm not really a fan of because you're basically committing this servo to this F1 for a lifetime. You never take it out and reuse it in another RC because, well, you're cutting the tabs off. Also, interestingly, it is sitting between these two plastic plates right over here with some double-sided stick tape on either side. How that's going to hold up, I'm not quite sure. We'll see when we get it out. But yeah, not really a fan of this so far, but you also gotta be careful because there are two separate directions for a standard servo and a low profile servo. So if you're building one of these, pay careful attention to that. So on to step 13 and 14, you are putting together the upper deck and then you are mounting the upper deck to the chassis. So for step number 15, you're attaching the front upper arms that you see right here. Step number 16, you're attaching your front uprights. Skipping over step 17 momentarily, we're going on to 18. You're putting together your friction damper and then you're gonna mount it to the chassis. So on to step number 19, which is your damper assembly. You're basically putting together your shock body, filling it with oil in step number 20 and then attaching it to the chassis in 21, giving you this beautiful Tamiya anodized blue mono shock. Okay, so going back to step number 17, you're attaching your radio equipment and your ESC. I have my ESC mounted in 
and I have my motor leads all wired. Ah, I did a great job with C and B, nice and clean, and then A got disastrous. That's an ugly solder job right there, yuck. Step number 22, you're mounting your tires to your wheels and then putting them on, and then you get this. Ha ha. And then step number 25, interestingly, you put your bumper on, but when you read step number 25, they say refer to step number seven and put it on in step number seven. So why do they make it step number 25? Beats me. Not a big deal. You just got to take this screw out from underneath and this slides in. Then you retighten the screw and then your bumper's on there. But let's stick a battery in here, fire it up and bench test this. Here's the body all cut out, sanded down, and washed, and now ready for masking and paint. I used some plastic wrap to mask up the body, and now we're ready for our first color, which is yellow. And here is our finished product, a dark, dark blue, almost like a midnight blue. I went with some blue Proline paint and just added a couple drops of black, and voila, here you go. And now it's time for stickers. And of course, the first sticker we have to put on is the Red Bull logo. That pretty much makes it, in my opinion. And now on to some more stickers. And here's our finished product. Well, the F-104 Pro 2 is all done and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I'm even more excited to get this out on the Fender Bender Speedway in our F-1 Group C race class. Unfortunately, I was unable to make it to our first race event of the season, the opening ceremonies. Um, unfortunately, with the black cloud I have hanging over my head, I just have so much going on. But I am going to most likely make it out to our second race event. And from what I understand, a bunch of my buddies who ran in the F1 said this was a blast. They had so much fun in that race class. And so I'm really looking forward to getting this out there. Uh, as far as the build, very easy. Loved every moment of it. I really love all the upgraded parts on here, all the blue anodized stuff. It really makes this chassis pop. Uh, I love the progression of the F104 um, to where it is now with all these upgraded parts on it. And uh, it really hasn't been updated in a few years, but uh, maybe Tamiya will do something sometime in the near future. But for right now, I think this is as good as we're going to get it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting this out there. Now, some of the other guys out there are going to be running, from what I understand, X-Ray... Uh, Roche is another one I've never heard of, or Schumacher F1s, but a majority of the guys out there will be running these Tamiya F104s. Still, I think uh, I'll be competitive and still have a lot of fun out there. As for how it turned out, like I said, I was very happy. Love the body. Uh, I went with Red Bull, Oracle, um, F1 livery. Uh, I got these stickers from a gentleman uh, in the UK. I will post uh, his website down below. Um, he has a whole variety of different F1 liveries on there. If you're looking for something F1, that's probably the guy to go to. Um, only thing is I wish this sticker right here uh, was a little bit bigger so it covered the whole side and you don't see the lines. Um, not sure why it's so small, but uh, in all the different um, Red Bull liveries they have, you know, the yellow in the front of the body over here and then they have a larger Red Bull, I guess, for an RC car sticker, a decal, we'll call it right now. Um, that covers from here all the way up to here and kind of like wraps around. I'm not sure why those didn't, uh, but everything else is fine on here. As far as the bigger stickers on here, decals, they're correctly placed. 
Um, however, when it came to all the other little sponsors, I just kind of went nuts and just placed them wherever. So if you're looking at this right now and you're like, that's not exact, I apologize. I just kind of went off on my own little way and just stuck the stickers wherever. But nonetheless, I think it looks really, really good. Now, as far as the tires on here, um, I'm going to be using not the stock tires. I'm going to be using Volante tires on here. Um, they're super soft in the rear, and uh, that is for the cooler weather, uh, just to get a little bit more traction. And as the weather gets warmer, I'm probably going to switch from a super soft compound to maybe a medium compound, just so that with the hot asphalt, I'm not wearing away the tire as fast with super soft. So I'm going to switch eventually. So I will be getting those on here when we go out to the Fender Bender Speedway to race. Um, I ended up using the stock Tamiya ones on here. I put the yellow stickers on there because the Volantes that I'm going to be putting on actually have all the writing on there in white. So I didn't want to put the yellow stickers over the white. So I'm just going to use these just for show. But when I'm out there, I use the Volantes. So all in all, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, super excited. Can't say that enough. We finally get out and do some racing. I think it'll take my mind off of things and just have a good old time. All right. So that's it for this episode. Keep your eyes peeled for a future race video. I will probably uh, do a video right from the Fender Bender Speedway where we'll run one or two qualifiers. I'll show you some highlights from each and then in the mains and then show you how I do with all different lap times and all that good stuff. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for your support. I'll check you all in the next video. Take care.